watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today you've reached part six of my Revit door family series and today we are looking at swapping door hardware or just swapping nested family components and how this can be done on an instance basis in the door when it's at the project level because sometimes we're not always going to want to swap things on a type basis. Um, so in this case we'll focus on handles. Um, so we've already looked at setting up a door family and in the last part we changed how we hosted our door leaf to a reference line. This enables us to swing our door at the family level, but also swing all the hardware the same way without having to nest it in the door leaf itself, which enables this whole system of swapping hardware. So previously we've set this up um, and we have this reference line that everything's hosted to, which is great. So this includes our handles that are separate to our leaf and it can also include other things like door protection, door panels, all sorts of things. Our new challenge that we have now is what if we want to switch over our door hardware, like our door handle or our closes or our sets, um, but we don't want to do this on a type basis. So how do we do this? Well, in this case, we're going to use a special system in Revit that you might not be aware of that's really useful. And it's called a type label parameter. I believe that's sort of what it's called. It's called a label parameter in the family itself. Um, but you can probably also call it a family types parameter. Uh, we're going to be using Revit 2020 and build 2.2. Now definitely make sure you download the reference files off of GitHub um, for this particular tutorial because you will need some families that I've built between this part and the last part um, just to speed up this overall demonstration video so that you're not watching me build every single little door handle and piece. Okay, so I'm just going to jump straight into my single swing door family. Um, if you do have the reference files, this particular file is just located in the doors folder. Um, and you've just got a single swing. Now there is a pivot door as well that I built in part 5B as I called it, um, but we're just focusing on the single swing door. Now at the moment the way this is set up is we have a door leaf, um, in this case it's called leaf type 2, and we have a handle set, um, handle set type 1. Now since the last tutorial um, I've actually went and just cleaned up the, this family set up, and one thing I did that's really important is I actually added a whole bunch of shared parameters instead of family parameters. So you can see anything with a BG for BIM Guru is a shared parameter. Now the reason I've done this is that as you switch between types, if you don't have either matching parameter names or the same shared parameter, you're going to lose these nested relationships between the nested component and the family. So for example, if in one family your leaf external finish is called leaf finish, and in another one you're going to swap it to, it's called leaf external finish, Revit won't make a match between those two as you cycle between them. And this would actually break the relationship between the nesting of the parameters at the door level. So it's really important that these either are the same exact same shared parameter or they have the same name. Otherwise, Revit can't make this match. Um, so I've set up all the shared parameters you'll need in this current door leaf. Um, and I've also went and built another door leaf as well. I've also built another handle set too. So likewise, the handle set, I've made sure that all the parameters that need to be shared are shared. Um, in this case, I just do need to nest the leaf thickness. So in this case, this isn't actually quite right. I am actually going to have to go and make some tweaks to the handle set, just as a good, a good example, I guess. So if I open up handle set type two, I believe in this case, um, it looks like everything is shared in this version. So you can see here, I've actually swapped out the leaf thickness for a shared parameter um, called BG dim the leaf thickness. Um, this is so that as I cycle between handle sets, it remembers which parameter is nesting into the leaf thickness, which controls the distance between the handles. Really important. Um, so I am gonna update, in this case, uh, that, that specific family. So I think it's handle set type one in this case that I'm dealing with. I think I've already updated it here. I just haven't reloaded it over the top. So I'm just gonna reload that door handle set um, and override it and just make sure that these parameters are all nested. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna nest the uh, leaf thickness parameter and I'm just gonna leave the pivot inset alone. That's just for the pivot door to push back the handle. Um, so essentially everything is nested like it needs to be. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm also gonna load in this door handle set, which is essentially the same family, but just a slightly different nested handle. In this case, it's like a push plate with a pull bar. So I'm gonna load this into my door as well. And you can just swap these naturally. So I can just change this over to handle set type two. And you can see that all the parameters get re retained um, as you change between them because they have the same shared parameter. So they find that match. 
I'm also using the width and the height parameter because they're system parameters. They're built in so Revit understands that they're the same parameter. But what I can also do is I can associate a parameter. Um, if I just click on the handle set and I go up here to label, I can add a parameter. Now I can make this a shared parameter as well if I want to. Um, in this case, I'll probably just keep it as a family parameter, but you may wish to use a shared parameter if you're gonna be using lots of different door families with lots of pieces of hardware that you wanna retain as you change between families. But I'm just gonna use a family parameter. I'm just gonna call this a handle set. And I'm gonna make this an instance-based parameter. Um, you can put it under any group you want. I'll just put it under general. And now we should end up with a little dropdown um, called, uh, in this case, we already have our frame type under graphics. I might just put this under general as well. So we set up our frame type before. We actually already did one of these in a previous part um, that maybe you didn't notice. But now I can actually change my handle set to any family that matches the category, in this case, doors. Um, so you do have to be careful which one you pick. So you obviously don't want to swap over the handle for a hinge set. So in this case, I'm just going to use handle set type two instead. And I can see that I've successfully swapped uh, this over. But now let's look at this at the project level. So let's just make a new project and I'm just gonna use the Autodesk template, which is a pretty cruddy template, but it gets the job done. I'm just gonna make a wall, go to 3D, and I'm just gonna take my door as it is right now and load it into the project. Remember that our door handle sets are shared families. The tick box for shared has been ticked on. So when I load in this family, it should also load in my door handles to the project as well. So I can see now I have handle set type one, handle set type two, and leaf type two that have all come in as a part of this door family. So I can actually itemize how many of these handle sets I currently have in use. So I can see right now, I have one handle set type two available. So we could schedule them, we could tag them, we can do all sorts of things with them. Remember that I can still open my door as well. We set that up in the last part, so that's all still working. But now what I can do is I can actually change the parameter for the handle set. So I can say that handle two is actually handle one. And now I've successfully swapped my handle set um, as it relates to this specific door. So I can have two of the same door and I can have one with handle set type one with handle set type two. So you can set up door hardware sets um, between doors, which are usually controlled separate to the door type itself, which is really handy. Um, so yeah, do keep the, in mind that this is like another thing you can do because of how we've nested our door leaf and our hardware in the previous part. And obviously I can go and open these doors to my heart's content and they should retain all of those nested parameters as I cycle between um, because they have the same, the same name or the exact same parameter. So if I, if I tab select my handle set, I can see that all these parameters are still being locked in by the host door itself. Now, I haven't actually tried this, but I don't know what happens if I use a non-ideal family. Let's say I'll take a hinge set. I can see in this case, nothing shows up because I'm in course detail. And in this case, I, I can't actually see anything. So it looks like the hinge set just hasn't worked. Um, if I take a door frame, I can see it's put a door frame around the door, which isn't very logical in this case. Um, notice that I'm actually able to dig in and grab things that aren't actually uh, shared families. If they exist inside the family as well, you can swap to them as well. But you obviously can't select them at the project level because they're just like geometry of the project because they're not shared. Um, but I can go back to handle one. Um, actually, whoops, I need to make my double rebate frame. Handle set one. And I think in this case, it looks like it, it successfully sort of remaps those parameters to where they need to be. So keep in mind that you do need to be careful what family type you pick, um, but not too careful. Um, so back here, I've also set up another door leaf as well. I've set up a glazed leaf in this case. So I've set up a leaf type three. Essentially, it's the same door leaf. It just has a glazed panel uh, pushed through the middle of it using a void and an extrusion. Now, in this case, I've added a new shared parameter um, called glazing one. So this, is, this isn't in leaf type two. It's only in leaf type three. So we are going to have to keep an eye on how this works when we swap between them. So in this case, I'm just gonna load this into my door. And likewise, I'm gonna be setting up a, a label parameter or a family type parameter for my leaf. So I'm gonna call this leaf type on an instance basis under general. Now let's just change this to leaf type three. So I'm gonna say leaf type two is actually leaf type three. And whilst it's leaf type three, I'm gonna set a parameter to the glazing as well. I'm gonna use this shared parameter for glazing. Now let's change it back to leaf type two. Now leaf type two doesn't have a parameter available 
for glazing. It doesn't exist. Let's go back to leaf type 3 and see what's happened. And look at that, it's unnested the parameter as I've changed it in the family environment. So even if the project level rationalizes that relationship, you have to be really careful in the family environment. If you make any changes for testing and a parameter doesn't exist between those two elements, you got bad news on your hands. So in this case, we've lost that nested relationship and we might not have noticed it either if we weren't being careful. So what we probably should do is we should go back to leaf type two and reintroduce that shared parameter, even if it's not being used, because that way the parameter stays associated as we swap between them. So I'm just gonna to go to my door leaf for type two and I'm just gonna add the parameter without associating it to anything. It's just there. So I'm just gonna, in this case, gonna to go to uh, materials for doors and just add my door glazing parameter on an instance basis. So it's unused, but it should maintain that relationship as we cycle between those door leaf types. But just goes to show you have to be very careful how you manage this. So I'm gonna reassociate that glazing parameter. I'm gonna change in this case to leaf type two. And now we can see that that maintains that relationship. And when we cycle back to lift type three, we can see that we should have successfully protected that parameter from becoming disassociated. So really important um, to understand. But from there, we've essentially set up a system um, that can support multiple changes to the door um, without necessarily impacting uh, the, the overall type of the door itself. So now we can say, oh, I want lift type two. No, I want lift type three and I can, I can really quickly cycle between these. So as long as you've nested these properly um, and they're shared and they occur at the project level, um, you do end up with quite a nice little dynamic hardware swapping system. Now you could make further changes to this to what I've done. For example, you could make the handle sets separate. So you have an internal and an external handle set. It does get more complicated when you start looking at things like double and single doors, because then you'll be looking at label parameters for either side of the door potentially, because you might have different leaf types either side. At that point, you may want to look at using type parameters for some of these systems using a label system. Now, one thing that you do have to be very careful with, um, with door types and labels and type catalogs is that family type parameters aren't stored in type catalogs, which is a big problem. So if I go and make my leaf type for doors type based, and I make another type, in this case, let's just call this one um, solid. Actually, no, this one's glazed. And let's call this one solid. So for the solid, I'm gonna say leaf type two. So notice now the leaf type is a type-based aspect of the door. So when I'm on solid, it should be solid. And when I'm on glazed, it should be glazed because that type parameter is controlling it. Well, let's export, export our type properties as a family types catalog. In this case, I'll just export it to the same location as the door itself. Okay, so let's let's actually just have a look at the file first. We might be able to spot the problem in the door file itself. Well, it's gonna be pretty hard to read actually. Um, let's just try looking at it in Notepad++. Yeah, it's still pretty unintelligible. Um, we could probably do a search for leaf type and see that we're not finding a match. Type, still finding no match. Actually, we've got frame but not type. So we can see that that parameter is not being stored. Now you can manually add the column in this CSV file to control the types, but, but what a drag, we don't want to do that. There is a really good article, I believe by Paul Auburn, where he talks about how you can do that, but it's a manual process. Now Dynamo might be able to do it somehow if you can script the workflow to add it to the CSV file. Probably not worth the effort though. But the problem that we'll face now is if I go to insert load family, and I specifically go to where I've saved that type catalog next to the family. And I get this dialog. I'm gonna be loading these in and I'll just look through, but I can't see the family type parameter. See, it's not there. So when I load this in, I believe that will get an issue. Notice how my glazed door, it's not glazed. And that's because at the type level, in this case, the leaf type hasn't correctly associated in this case, um, it should be under General, I probably haven't saved the door yet, have I? No, I haven't saved the door yet. Probably need to do that again. So I'll reload that and I'll just bring in those two types again and I'll overwrite their parameters. But we may not see a successful result. It looks like it's okay in this case. Sometimes it does seem to work, but see how the solid door is now glazed? So that type parameter hasn't updated successfully. So under here, you can see it's still using leaf type three. It's using the one that was available in the preview mode. 
So obviously this doesn't really work on a type basis. Now the only way you can get this to work is by not using type catalogs at all. And that will use the correct type. It seems like Revit can understand what types are meant to be used um, for label parameters, but not using type catalogs is a bit of a drag sometimes because you may not want to load in that many types from a family as well. So it's a fine balance between how you use these parameters, but keep in mind on an instance basis, A-OK, -okay. it'll get the job done. Now do keep in mind as you change between families using instance based label parameters, it should retain what the element was if it's a shared parameter for the label type parameter. So you do need to be careful if you swap between two doors, for example, this one here is a glazed door, but you can see that this handle isn't really compatible uh, with this leaf type. So you do need to be careful that you understand when you're changing between families, how the label parameters change as well. But it's a pretty dynamic and flexible system. And I think there's a lot of things you'll be able to do with this. Um, and ultimately this is pretty much the door series almost finished. Um, we've created some pretty intelligent doors. We could obviously schedule the hardware sets now because they're shared families that we can schedule separately. Um, but in the last part, we'll probably be looking at just how to polish off the family from a 2D perspective because the family still has no uh, 2D swings in floor plan, for example. It's still just got the 3D elements themselves. So we're going to be focusing on uh, plan and graphic representation and also just adding some 2D symbols that correspond to the door and just some best practices that I use as well. Anyway, um, that's all for this one. So hopefully this gives you a new trick that you can play with and apply. Um, and the files for this will be on GitHub as well. So in the next part where we're going to be adding 2D graphics, you'll have the content that I'm using as well. So if you're not already following and subscribing, um, feel free to do so. Uh, I make two videos a week and aim to for as long as I can. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all in future videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.